radiant light is so captivating, but how do we paint it? In this tutorial, I'll teach you my secrets to painting radiant light with a golden glow. I'll also teach you an easy value study technique. This will be great for beginners to identify your values and your light source. I'll also be sharing another easy technique that's going to set the stage for this golden foundation. I'll share with you my initial soft pastel selections carefully chosen to create a sense of warmth. You will witness my layering techniques as I build upon this painting and teach you how certain color theory rules are a bit different when painting this type of light source. So come on in the studio with me and experience the magic of painting radiant light. Let me first go over a general supply list and I will get more specific as I paint. The first thing I'll be doing is creating a sketch. It's a value study. All you'll need is some sketch paper and a charcoal pencil. I use some gray sketch paper. Also, you will want a water-friendly pastel surface. I'm going to be using pastel matte. I also recommend a light color, white or cream. Next, you'll need some sort of golden color to tone as an underpainting on your surface. I'll be using golden fluid acrylics, but I'll talk about some other options you could use as well. You're of course going to need a brush, something to apply your beautiful golden color. I'll be using a medium and a large brush. They're kind of textured. And last but certainly not least are some soft pastels. If you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will be getting my color notes. But in this lesson, I'll be showing a lot of my pastels as I use them. And as I always say, use what you have. This is not a solicitation for you to go out and buy new products. And many of these things can be altered or changed. So definitely use what you have. All right, let's get started. Hello artists and patrons on my Patreon page. Welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. I invite you into the studio today for a painting experience that I hope you'll love and learn a lot. I'm going to be working on a surface that I love. It's pastel matte and I'm working on white and I'm going to tone it a beautiful golden underpainting. I'll describe why I like to do that and creating a painting with soft pastel of a beautiful scene. I found this reference image on unsplash.com. I did alter it a bit. If you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will get all of my altered um, images and my color notes. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about the products and then we're gonna get started. So I hope you learn a lot and have some fun. All right, here we go. I was particularly drawn to this gorgeous light that is just casting its light down onto the image and kind of cascading down and around. But before starting, I'm going to create a value sketch. And I altered the image again in Photoshop to really block out the different values in this painting. Again, if you're a patron of mine, you'll get access to this image. And I think this is really gonna be great for beginners to be able to see the values because color sometimes gets in the way. So I highly recommend, no matter what level of artist you are, to convert your images to black and white and do a value study before your painting. The surface I'm working on is Strathmore toned gray drawing paper. I love this surface for many reasons. It's great to sketch on, but mostly because it's gray. I prefer it to white drawing paper often because I like to sometimes get a white pastel pencil or white charcoal pencil and have some highlights in my sketch as well. I'm using a medium charcoal pencil. That's all I use for this charcoal sketch. Notice that I have put a circle in my sketch. That's to represent where that brightest light is. And what I'm doing here is trying to capture the motion and keeping my marks very gestural with a lot of movement. The other goal is to capture a bit of a value study. Now you might notice you're starting to see almost a trail uh, of like a path that's leading up to that tree. I'm going to use my values underneath in this painting to subconsciously lead the viewer into the painting. So I'm just using my charcoal pencil very loosely and keeping my marks just so energetic and uh, I don't want this to feel stiff at all. I blended it with my finger a little bit but here I'm showing you kind of the path of the composition. It comes in almost like an S-shaped curved in and around to the tree and back out with the drama of the sky. 
And you simply could just do a sketch like I did, but I wanted to take it a step further. So I grabbed some pastel that were just various shades of gray, uh, dark, medium, and lighter values. One of them's a little bluish, you can see there. But I'm just getting in my values. And what this is doing for me is it's not only giving me practice, but it's giving me a reference so that when I go to paint, I can already see what my strategy is as far as my values. Now we see that source of light there that is the lightest value. That's a no brainer. You can see that, but it's, it's casting its light down onto the field so that you can see that things are like a little gradation of light to dark as it's going from the horizon line down. Here's where you'll see me using a piece of willow charcoal. You could either use vine charcoal or willow charcoal or even the same charcoal pencil. But I find these long sticks of charcoal are great for me getting very gestural um, mark making. Also, I'm using my opposite hand. You guys know I'm usually painting with my left hand. My right hand's kind of getting in the way of everything right now. But what that's going to do also is cause you to have marks that are different than you normally make. So I recommend sometimes using your non-dominant hand. And now I'm grabbing a lighter pastel and speeding it up again to show you how I'm just getting in some of the petals on some of the flowers. And this is nothing to be specific. Again, just capture the energy, the motion, and the values of this preliminary sketch. And I'm actually going to be using this sketch as a reference while I paint. Once again, the surface I'm using is pastel matte. I love this surface for pastel painting. It is water friendly and it receives many layers of soft pastels. So this surface is one that I use often. And in this particular case, I'm using white. And the reason I'm using white is I really want a luminous glow. And I'm going to add another product that I'm gonna show you in just a second to create that. And it's just best done on white. Also, use whatever you have, but I recommend a water-friendly surface to do this and also a surface that's a lighter color. Here you can see I've taped my surface to my board. I've marked off my area to be the same proportions as the reference image. And it's basically nine and a half across by 14 tall. And I have my other images taped around for references. Now let me share with you how I'm going to create this golden underpainting. The product I'll be using to create this beautiful warm golden glow beneath my painting called an underpainting is golden fluid acrylics and this color is a mouthful quinacridone nickel azo gold I love this color unfortunately golden doesn't make it anymore so I have uh, a link to their site where they'll show you how to mix this color if you would like to use this um, also this little stripe right here uh, on golden bottles like this it shows you how transparent the color is this one's so transparent that's why it has this glow it allows the white of the paper to show through making it luminous now you don't have to have this product to do this underpainting i'll give you some variations of other products you could use while i paint i'm just going to put a little bit of this in a small dish i'm gonna have some water near me and some paper towels and a couple of lids to some yogurt tops you may have seen there i use those just to mix up different consistencies now let me show you the brushes that i'm going to use this brush is called a hockey brush it's spelt like hake i used to say it that way h-a-k-e and i just like it for the texture and it's also you know fairly wide brush but i'm also going to use another brush that's even wider than that one and it's i don't even know where i got it from but it's got a lot of texture to it and you'll see how it kind of creates some texture to the grasses in the foreground but as I always say use what you have and I'll have links to most of these products in the description of this video so first what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing some of it full strength and now you'll see where my little yogurt tops come in handy this is just tops from Greek yogurt and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of the full strength onto that you can see I use this and reuse it all the time oh no that one was cottage cheese sorry and I'm going to grab a little bit of water on my hockey brush and I just dipped my brush in some of the water. I'm going to dilute this quite a bit, but I'm gonna kind of test it too. I'm working with my lightest value first and I'm gonna start in the sky. What's the lightest value in this image? It's the sky. That's a little dark there. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to it and dilute it even more. 
And I'm gonna speed this up, and I think actually when it's sped up, you can get the idea even better. You kind of see it all as a whole. I'm getting in the values that are lighter in the sky, darker in the foreground. You see how that textured brush is allowing me just to get some texture in there. And this is just gonna serve as first a beautiful base for a golden glow. It's also going to serve as a value study. I've been talking a lot lately about let your underpainting do the work for you. Go ahead and establish your shapes and your values, and then you've really got a great roadmap to get started, plus this gorgeous golden glow. So I eventually get to where I'm working almost full strength. I wanted a little bit of darker values. I often talk about creating an ellipse around your painting. It really helps create focal point energy. And now I have it dry. I used a blow dryer actually. And I have one of my markers. This is a Tombow dual brush grayscale marker. I've been using markers a lot lately when I'm painting like this. I have uh, a wet underpainting that I've dried and now I'm going to add more wet medium on top of it but I want to get my sketch in first and I don't want what I sketch to get liquefied or muddied by any wet medium I'll apply after that and I'm sketching so lightly here you can hardly see it but I'm getting the placement of some of my flowers and kind of the direction of that tree now here I go again adding more of the golden fluid acrylic and what I'm doing is working around some of the flower shapes that I've drawn in and I'm getting that feeling of those dark grasses if you look at the black and white reference image in the scene here you can see some really dark values down in the grasses in the foreground and of course course in this tree there are some darker values so I'm sketching in my tree now you can see a little better uh, with my little Tombow marker and I'm using my hakey brush hockey brush I said it the wrong way again um, to just loosely get in you see I'm kind of holding the brush so loosely with my hand now I got a smaller brush that I'm just brushing in some of the darker tree trunk shapes and again just keep this really loose and gestural now i'm using kind of a medium strength and i'm getting in some of those distant trees and can you see the texture here of these brushes now when you get in a little closer um, getting a few of those motion of the clouds and as i was saying i'm letting this underpainting do a lot of the work for me i have energy going i have motion i have value and once this is dry it's time for the pastel application I decided to pre-choose some of my pastel colors. I don't always do it this way, but it really does make it convenient so you don't have to get up a lot to pick your colors and it just makes things a lot faster. So I like to group things in little groupings. Here are a couple of my darks. This is a Mountain Vision. It's a really nice dark purple. That's the Terry Ludwig eggplant, that other little dark. I got me a selection of purples. I love purples for shadowy colors. And of course I need some greens for these grasses. I've got some darker greens that are a little cooler there's a neutral couple neutral greens I have some brighter um, yellowy greens as things recede into the distance they're going to get lighter so that's why I need some of these brighter lighter warmer greens because they're in the sunshine I've got me a collection of some reds and oranges some are a little more neutral some lean a little more magenta of course some bright yellowy oranges for the tips of those flowers here are lighter uh, value yellows and uh, some of them are a little neutral as well of course i like to have me a selection of some neutrals i moved a couple of these down to where i have my lightest values that will be for the sky i don't think i used all of those light values for the sky it was a little too light I do add a few more colors as I work, but again, if you're a patron of mine, you will be getting my color notes for this painting. I'd like to show you this set of soft pastels. I chose to choose some of the golden colors. See those gorgeous golden colors and even that green? It's the Sennelier 40 half stick set. Sennelier pastels are so awesome. They're soft, the quality is great, they're professional, and they're kind of affordable. Um, but here I'm using one of the purples I had pre-chosen. And why would I use purple down in these shadows? Well, I'm going to add some different colors of darks. And they really interact with each other and have 
so much more interest than if you just used one color alone. When I first started painting, I probably would have gone with a, a dark green or gray or something. Um, so now I'm using, it's kind of a brownish color. Notice I'm working around the flower shapes I had lightly sketched in, and I'm doing something called color echoing and I call it just efficiency of painting. When you have a color in your hand, why not go ahead and use it somewhere else? Plus, color echoing just means you use similar colors throughout your painting, and it really creates a sense of cohesiveness or, uh, or just um, harmony to your painting. So, so far I just used the purple and that brown color. Now, let me talk about this light source. What happens in the light? things get lighter, right? And they get warmer in color. So just remember that rule with light. So the left side of this tree is going to be warmer. It's next to the light. And the right side is going to be darker and perhaps a little cooler. You can see it even in the reference image. Um, but keep in mind, reference images, I, it sounds harsh, but I say they lie. Well, they they focus on everything, and we can break out our artistic licenses and just use a few color rules and make your paintings much more exciting. And that is one of them. Um, things in the light are warmer. Things not in the light are typically cooler, and you can push that a bit. I always do that with like purples and turquoise colors. Um, so now I'm getting some of that same green just down in the grasses, and I'm not trying to do anything specific at this point. I am just getting in the big shapes and values mostly, but color, uh, you know, a bit as well. And this is called the blocking in stage where I'm not worried about little details. I am squinting my eyes, looking at my reference image and looking at the values. See, I even got a little darker. Um, some of the values are really dark um, around some of the foreground flowers there. I'm getting a few of the flower centers in. And by the way, I mistakenly, when I was painting, I don't know why, but that main flower, if you look at the reference image kind of in the front there, it's one flower. I don't know why I painted it as two and I could have left it that way, but later I go back Back and correct it. So I'm using this little rusty color just to give me an idea of where some of the other flowers might be cascading or receding into the distance. And you can also see I'm marking the pastel colors on the side of my pastel mat as I paint. So you can kind of get an idea of the color. Like I said, my patrons get my color notes. I take a separate sheet and I mark all the colors down for my patrons, not necessarily all the name brands and definitely not all the numbers, but they get an idea of the color choices and oh my goodness, my patrons on my Patreon page, they're creating the most beautiful work. And I love just seeing how they uh, grow in advance. And it really, it's a family. I get a little excited talking about my patrons. And if you're a patron of, my, of mine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just such a beautiful environment of artists. So anyway, enough of that tangent. So things get a little flatter in the distance. That's why you saw me go a little horizontal there. Now here's where I'm gonna talk about one of the color rules I mentioned at the beginning of this that gets broken uh, when you're creating a light source that's kind of low on the horizon like this. Typically, colored temperatures, they will be typically warmer in the foreground and they cool off in the distance. So often when I'm talking about creating trees in the distance, I say they cool off just like mountains, they get a little more blue or purple. By the way, the trees on the right side I'm painting there, why are they darker? They're further away from the sun, okay? It's a simple rule. Further away, they're gonna be a little bit darker in value. Closer to the sun, a little lighter in value. Um, but back to that rule with the things like trees in the distance near the source of the sun, well, typically, if the sun was higher in the sky, I would paint those trees a little maybe greenish blue, maybe add a little bluish to them or a little purplish to them, uh, depending on how far away they are. But when it's right near the setting sun, they're going to be warmer. So you're gonna see me develop those trees um, with even a little bit more pinkish tones later. You can kind of see it in the reference image. They're doing that. The trees near the sun are warmer. They're almost washed out a bit from the light. So uh, as I paint, you'll see that to continue to develop. Now this was a little light. It's one of those colors I chose at the very beginning and I said I, I wasn't feeling it. I felt like it was too light. Even though in the reference image, of course, the sun is very light. I'm gonna keep it more warm though as I develop it. But those clouds in the sky that looked light, I felt like it was gonna be distracting and too light to, 
to uh, keep those values super light in the upper part of the sky. So you'll see me gradually um, just keep those a little darker. And uh, you'll also see me carving into that tree shape with some negative painting to create more of the feeling of branches and leaves. Here's where I mentioned adding a little bit of that pretty, almost like a peachy pink color. I put a little bit of it in the sky. Again, that's called color echoing. And once again, it's because those trees near the source of the sun, so low in the horizon, are going to be warmer, reddish, uh, orange, pinkish, peachy colors. And um, I'm also remembering that um, things near the sun get warm with these grasses. Notice as I um, transition the grasses from the foreground to the distance, my colors get warmer. Also, my grass shapes get shorter, closer together, further away, uh, the further away it gets, they get um, where you can't see the vertical marks anymore at all. And eventually, the marks will become horizontal, almost like a blanket of grass across the field. All right, this is the point where I'm gonna give you a few more limited little clips of the rest of this painting, but this is the point where my patrons, um, my patrons got slower speeds, by the way, they weren't seeing it this fast, and I gave full commentary, just so you know, if you ever wanna consider becoming a patron. But hold on for this little Patreon announcement I'll make, and uh, then continue to watch the rest of the painting process and the final at the end. And if you would like to become a patron and get all of that extra content I'm always talking about, it's super easy. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time and you become part of a beautiful family of artists of every skill level, by the way. And my favorite part is I get to see your work. So come join the family. And now with most things blocked in in this painting, it's time to create that beautiful golden glow. I held up a box of yellows that I have. I don't know if you've bought many pastel sets, but I find a lot of pastel sets come with a lot of yellows. Um, now I just glazed that lighter light. Do you see, I, I brought it down onto the land and that's what happens. You can see it in the reference image that's black and white there, that the light is really pretty light down on the land. It almost creates a circle. And I didn't want a hard edge like the circle in the reference image though. Um, and now I'm just continuing to develop the tree a little bit. And notice that during this painting process, I have worked the whole. I didn't get hung up on any one area. Um, here I'm creating a little bit of space. These are called sky holes. Rather than painting the individual branches or leaves of a tree, you create more of a shape of all of the leaves and you carve the sky down into it. And now is when I'm finally going to start working on the flowers a little bit. Why would I be using this pink here? Well, these golden flowers are down. Some of the, the petals are a little more in shadow. I don't want to use a blue or a purple for the leaves in shadow or the petals in shadow. So what is a cooler? Okay, we're in shadow. What is a cooler like? yellow or orange. If you move around the color wheel from um, yellow, red, orange, um, you'll eventually get to pink. Pink is a cooler orange or yellow. Um, so uh, often pinks can work nicely as shadows um, in cooler areas where you have warm colored flowers like this. Here's where I, again, I, I mistakenly thought it was two flowers there. And you know, it could have worked that way too, but later you'll see where I, I change it. I actually correct it. Yes, you can correct pastel paintings. Now I've jumped ahead a little bit more here. I don't do this in the Patreon version, but I wanted you to see how I have done a gradation of value from light, from the distance to the sun, down to dark in the foreground, and also with warmth. It's warmer in the distance, coming down to cooler and darker in the foreground. Now here's where I corrected that flower. I basically just erased the other ones out with a stiff bristle brush. And uh, I decided to make this one a little more true to the variety or the species of flower. I don't always do that. Sometimes my flowers are just kind of willy nilly. They're just flower impressions rather than a species. But uh, for this one, I did want to get a little bit more specific. And you see how things are developing here it's coming along and i do feel like these flowers are reaching towards that distant light that's what we should be doing we should be reaching towards the light of the lord and just praising him and i that's what i think my paintings do it's my act of worship and praise i praise and i pray and i worship while i paint and uh, it's just one of my most precious experiences in life i decided to add a little bit more red to the center sections of some of these flowers. And now I'm gonna create some stems. I held up those little long 
long sticks of pastels. They're called Prismacolor New Pastels. I have a, I'll have a link to all the products I talk about in the description of this video. But now I'm using a thicker pastel to get some of those thicker um, leaf shapes that are coming out. I'm zooming in here so you can see that the underpainting, that golden color I created at the beginning is indeed showing through. I don't cover it all up. Some of you guys ask that. Why do you cover it all up? Well, the influence of it is really showing through and it does help create that radiant golden glow. No, I didn't frame my painting already. I found a neat little app. It's called the Frame It app. You have to pay for the premium features, but there are some good free features as well. So please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. I'd love to have you as part of the Monet Cafe YouTube subscribers and become a patron if you like. Also, you need some hope in this weary world. Well, here is some from the book of Isaiah. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As always, artists, God bless and happy painting.